Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to be taking a look at another one of Bandai's absolutely awesome 30 minute missions kits. This right here is the new Bylon Forces X-Mac, which is known as the Revernova. And what we've seen by those particular forces so far would have been the Portanova, the CL Nova, and now this ride here. Also, I'm going to be grabbing all of my green 30 minute missions kits to kind of throw them together to make something with this, because just like every new X-Mac that we see, this has something a little unique, actually a few things quite unique to it that give us a whole bunch of new options. But anyway, before I get into that, I will mention this video right here would not have been possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan, so the link is down there in the description. I will mention that the last few videos that were on here were all kind of pre-recorded and pretty quick, and I will be getting back to more model kick content from, well, pretty much today. What I actually wanted to start with was the perfect grade perfectibility, but that's going to take a little while to build, but that will be coming up next. Also, I do have this on the way that should be quite interesting to those of you who have been enjoying the third-party kit reviews that I've been doing lately. This is the Fire Shadow Plastic Model Kit Deluxe Edition, which is totally not Starscream. At least that's what it looks like to me. This, from what I can see, is a kind of like high-res figure on the inside and model kit on the outside. So I'm looking forward to getting that the minute it drops. And of course, this week has some really nice releases including another 30 minute missions kit, another iron blooded orphans kit. And the one thing that I'm super excited about dropping this week is the full mechanics Raider Gundam. I love the calamity and I can't wait to see that. I also have the Isle, Isle, I always say Isle, Ale calamity on the way. And on the note of getting back to stuff, you may have seen on here that I did mention that Spooky did have a little bit of a heart problem that actually at first seems like it was going to be very, very, very bad. But anyway, that turned out to be not so bad. He does have a heart valve issue, but it's nothing all that life-threatening, thankfully. But anyway, on to the review. So first off, jumping into the aesthetics with the full 360 degree spin. And as you can tell straight away, this is the Bylon Forces new heavy weapons X-Mac. This is big, hefty, and with a whole lot of interesting aspects to it. First off, it's thick, heavily armored, and you may or may not have noticed a couple of things that are quite cool. First off, the legs are absolutely massive, but that doesn't mean that this is a huge kit. These are always in and around the same sort of size as each other, so they do retain compatibility completely across the line. So this is a little shorter than you'd actually expect it to be. When you put it beside some Gunpla, it does come under the size of your standard Gundam kit. And this is 144th scale as well. So this is exactly how tall it would be besides something like the high grade or XMT2 beyond global. The great aspect about this does mean that it is completely kit bashable with everything we've seen from this line of kits so far, which we will take a look at in a little while. As for the other awesome aspects about this, this is one of the first ever X-Max to actually have front skirting armor, and that is front skirting armor that moves. On top of that round back, we've got a new backpack that adds some more compatibility. We're used to seeing a lot of things like C-clips and three millimeter pegs all over the place, but what this backpack actually adds is a couple of shoulder sockets. So that means by using this, you can actually make yourself a four-armed X-Mac. Finally, this is rocking ahead with the typical mono eye we see with the Bylon forces so far, and that really gives this a bit of a high mock kind of look, as in the high mock from Gundam Build Fighters. But anyway, let's jump on in a little bit closer to check out all the different aspects that we have here before we well, check out the accessories and kit bash on some parts. So first off, like I mentioned right up in the front there, we do have some actually functioning side skirting armor, which is a first on one of these kits. So if you ever wanted to build yourself a 30 minute missions that actually has some side skirting, or should I say front skirting, then this is where you can start off. I'm sure we're going to get a whole bunch of different colors of these in future, in case you don't want to end up painting your kit. These are actually attached on via just a peg, so it does mean they can't move around as much as your typical Gundam kit can, but that does mean they are very, very secure. Other kind of interesting aspects we have on here are these kind of thruster modules right here. Now, these are a little bit hollow on the inside like you're seeing right here, but they do look pretty cool from the side. Once again, something you can steal off of this for another build if you want to. If you're actually curious about the head on this, this does actually have a fully functioning neck joint, so it's not as limited as you'd expect. I thought this would have next to nothing, and that also does mean you can just pop off the head and add on a different kind of head inside of that collar if you want something a little less grunt looking. 
But lastly then, the main event back here is this backpack, which is rocking a pair of these kind of, what I can only describe as shoulder joints. I guess I can show you. Pop off the arm, and an arm can be popped into that. Here, hold on, I take off the shoulder so you can see. If you pop an arm in there, it's now attached. So now you can have yourself a bit of a Gushion rebake kind of feeling. If you don't like them that low, you can just flip it all around. Pretty cool. So anyway, when it comes to the accessories in here, it's just accessory singular, which is this big old rifle. But when it comes to a 30 minute missions kit, it's not only the mecha that is, well, variable, it's also the rifle too. So when it comes to equipping the rifle, it's very simple as usual. It just slides on into the hand like so, and it is pretty damn big. As well as the standard handle for holding onto it, we also have a swinging handle up top. Now this kit has plenty of articulation in order to get into position holding it with both hands, but I will mention the shoulders on these kits can be a little bit on the loose side at times and pull out on you. So yeah, just make sure you're supporting them when you're moving the arms. As usual with these weapons, this is made up of a bunch of modular elements, which means you can take it apart into four different parts, including the swinging handle up top. And that does mean, of course, this is compatible with sold separately weapons and weapons that come with other x Max. Actually, I'm pretty sure I just showed this Rabio weapon right here, and I don't think it can actually fit because of the upper sec. Oh, wait, never mind. It does fit. So this way or that way, these are nicely designed. And I just showed this as well, which isn't compatible because this is a weapon from the original Earth Forces, which actually has a different end on it and compatibility thing right here. So it seems like you are a little bit limited towards the more Portanova style weapons. So let's see, this would have been one of those, pop off this end, and yeah, that'll fit in there and you've got yourself a little bit of a Gatling. We also have this magazine which can pop off like so, and you can stick that in the top if you want it to load from above, or you could just pop that off entirely and attach on something like this sensor right here, which should just fit up top like this. So these are variable, but there is a little bit of a limitation here and there, depending on what forces these are designed for. Which, you know, makes sense. So anyway, let's get this a little bit customized. Take a lot of the best aspects of all of these green kits and stick them together. Now I will mention, they're not all referred to as green. This is green, those ones are green, but these ones right here, which are a little bit darker, but still are the same combination of colors as we get in the green kits, are actually referred to as olive drab. So if you are looking to grab some, that might be some handy info to know. So my least favorite aspect of the Revernova right here personally has to be the head. It's just kind of a little bit, well, super grunty in a way. It just looks like it's almost an automated unit with this attached. So just gonna pop that off and choose something from one of the other green mecha. So as of right now, I'm kind of torn between using parts from the other Novas, like the Porta Nova and the CL Nova to kind of maintain the actual faction parts, or should I take some parts from some of the other cooler looking x Max and customized looking x Max to kind of get something else. Now, if you look inside the manual, Bandai suggested a ridiculously cool build. This is the one right here and it's got a big old crab claw of an arm. There is a front and the back of what that will look like. The kits that you need for this is a extra Porta Nova and a CL Nova, so this is only using Bylon Forces X Max, which is pretty cool. So that does mean I guess it's lore accurate as loose as the lore is in 30 minute missions so far. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a head fashion show on this particular X Max right now. I'm not gonna do this with all the parts like the arms and the legs, etc., or this will be a two hour long video, but I'm just gonna try and attach the different heads so you can see what they all turn out like. So there's a bit of a commander version of a CL Nova head attached. This right here is what you will end up with. It already looks a lot more dynamic. Next up, popping a Porta Nova head on, which is so classic, man. It feels like so long since the original ones came out. Actually, I'm having a little bit of an issue with this. So it does actually attach, but as you can see, the armor kind of just happens to kind of clash there. So the clavicle armor around the kind of collar section and the frills around the head have kind of clashed. It does fit but it leaves a big ol' nasty gap. That's a definite no. So now grabbing a part from an actual Earth x Mac. This right here is a head from a Alto. This is the olive drab one. That's what it looks like on there. That actually looks quite small, but in a way it makes the body look kind of strong. So if you actually had some smaller legs on there, this might look like a kind of buff sort of x Mac. but as it stands, looks a bit small. 
However, I will say it really matches with that collar very, very nicely in an almost kind of armored knight kind of way. And the last head I'm going to try out here is the head of a Rabiot. That pops in like so, a little stronger looking than what we would have seen with the Alto's head. And that actually almost kind of suits. Let's get the shoulders up a bit there so you can see what that looks like. Honestly, that's not too bad. So in the end, I decided to go with the head of the Ciel Nova, the commander style one, because it was just kind of looking really, really cool with it so far. Now I'm going to steal an idea straight from the instructions and I'm going to remove the legs from the knees down. That's really simple to do. It's just some C-clips, pops off like that. Grab the olive drab alto with the big old ground type backpack or whatever it's called. Steal the legs from the knees down off of that. And also I noticed from the instructions, they seem to have stolen the side skirting armor as well. So I'm going to do exactly that. Attach the alto's legs on like so. Remove these little thruster side segments and then replace them by attaching these side skirting armors onto the front of, well, the legs like so. That looks pretty cool. So right now I'm trying to toss up which would make the best sub arms around back. So this is a Portanova's arm here, which looks a little on the short side. But the actual narrow and longness that we get from the CL Nova's arm is actually kind of working for me. I feel like this kind of seems almost spidery or long enough to actually work as a sub arm and maybe fold up out of the way when not in use. Yeah, so the CL Nova's arms actually tuck up very, very, very nicely when they're not actually being used, which makes them a little better for the Portanova and they actually can move around very, very agile and spidery. These are working. Only problem now is trying to figure out where I actually left the hands of the CL Nova. It might be in one of these boxes. Ooh. I need to be more organized. These ones right here are a little bit on the maybe too large and over the top kind of look. I need them to be able to use some weapons. All right, so I found some hands. These, well, one is actually from the Rabiot. The other one is from the Portanova I had to make do with. But this is working out quite cool. I think all it needs now is some weapons. And I'm touring between some kind of long range weapons or some ridiculously close quarters for armed murderage. But I will mention before that, if you don't like the arms coming down from below, this is actually easily swappable. Just pop it off like this, pop it on up top like so. And then you'll just have to, well, change the arms to whichever side you want the thumb to be on. And you've got arms over the top, whichever you prefer. If you want some rebake action or some underarm spider action. But before I actually finish up this video, I can't help but be intrigued by this here claw arm that Bandai have designed out of parts. Because it goes beyond the normal customization you'd see by Bandai on one of these here thingamajiggers. And by thingamajigger, I mean manual. Let's try it out. So it seems to be mainly made out of Portanova. So I see some arm as well as some legs. So pop those both off. I think we only need some lower legs. So let's remove that at the knee. Never mind that it's not of the Portanova at all. This is actually just the leg of the CL Nova with the foot turned backwards. So that means this doesn't actually do any kind of clipper action at all, which is, well, extremely, extremely disappointing, but I'll make it nonetheless. Upper arms can be connected to lower legs because it's the same sort of C-clip. However, I feel like Bandai have been lying to me again because this doesn't fully clip because this bit of armor actually gets in the way of the upper armor there and they just don't ever seem to get to the clippy point. So that means it just, well, it's not really holding on there. Anyway, that arm pops off like so. This new clipper majigger attaches on up here. But as you can see, this is by no means really working out. It's kind of, ooh. So yeah, in order for this to actually work, you would have to modify the upper arm armor here by actually filing away part of this because it just doesn't fit in enough. Like when you actually do get it in, it can hold ever so slightly, but this isn't actually a pincer that can work. This barely holds on, so that is kind of lying. If you're, well, see that in the manual and then buy the other kits to use with it, it's not, it's not really going to work out. All right, I pulled this out a little bit just so we've got some more reach and... There we go. Nah. All right, after pulling that little part out a little bit so that we've got a little bit more C-clip to work with, we actually do have some articulation, which is cool. It still kind of looks like a foot from pretty much every other angle, but it is an option. Once again, this doesn't actually do any kind of clipping, but from some certain angles, I guess it does look kind of cool. Personally, though, I like my mecha actually functional, so I'm going to stick with just the standard arm so it can hold on to some weaponry. And while I'm talking about this, 
I might as well check out if I can make anything from the leftover parts of the Ciel Nova, the Alto, and the legs of the River Nova. Hmm, never mind, it seems like when you steal all the good parts, what you've left over looks a little awkward. So that is what the lower leg of the River Nova looks like with the top of the Alto leg. And I was curious as to what a Ciel Nova's leg would look like with the River Nova's foot on the bottom. And uh, I don't know, not feeling it. So next up today, we're going to be taking a look at the 30 minute missions option part set seven, customized heads B. Now we've taken a look at customized heads A before, and this, as far as I can see, is 100% compatible with that. And on the side of the box, we've got a whole bunch of ridiculously over the top heads in here. These are a little more evil, a little bit more fantasy like as well. And we've got a straight up skull head in here as well, which is ridiculous. When you get this opened up, you've got three runners in here, one of which is a clear part for fitting into the head. So we do have a clear lens in the front of the face, almost gym style. In the two gray runners we have included in here, we do have a joint set that we've seen in a lot of option sets so far. This is really handy and has one of my favorite things in it for these kits, and that is little caps for using on the three millimeter holes if you want to cover those up so they look, well, covered up. When they're opened up, they're a little glaringly obvious. Lastly then is the parts to make up the head, and we've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. We do have some stickers as well for the different sensors, and they just stick on in the usual kind of way, and I recommend using something like a toothpick because it makes life very, very easy. So first off, we've got the core unit of the head, which is this right here. Very simplistic, we've got a clear part up front, and a bunch of attachment points on the side, the back, and the front. If you're curious as to what this would look like on the Rever Nova, then this is what it looks like, popping off the head and attaching this on. It is very, very basic as of yet, but we do have a lot of parts for attaching onto this. But what I noticed right here is that when I tried to attach the head onto this, this little section here ended up folding in on me, and I realized this is actually a feature, not a mistake. So this must be for using with that upcoming Roy Roy, which kind of looks like the head of this particular kit right here. So inside of the manual here, we've got six different options for how to put this together. But as far as I can see, all of the parts, the upper and lower parts of these are interchangeable. So you can probably make whatever kind of combination that you like. Also, the skull face can be used separately on the Maxian Forces x Mac, which is the Spinatio. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, let's get these parts attached. So these attach on very simply, just slot them in like so there is that lower segment which gives me a little bit of a full metal panic kind of feel and same goes with the upper segment here which attaches right on onto the top simple as that and that's kind of the vibe i'm getting off of this right here so there we go there is head design number one roundy up top a little bit sharp down bottom and nothing attached onto the rear sections but we do have options for using back here and the instructions doesn't say to use any so I'm just going to grab some at random. So we do have some side holes here which can attach on some more optional bits. I went for these kind of ear-like segments and that, that right there looks pretty damn cool. So a lot of the optional parts when it comes to 30 minute missions come in grey. So that's why I've been using this bit of a hybrid x mac right here for, well, a kind of a test bed for trying things out on because it's mainly made out of grey parts. So pretty much the vast majority of this is made out of optional parts besides I think the lower leg and the upper arms which are made out of a grey rabio. Maybe the waist unit as well but for the most part everything here has come from some kind of option kit. So I'm gonna pop off the head and use this to test them out. So popping on the new head and so far that looks pretty damn cool. Damn. This is the first one that already looks awesome. I don't know if this can be outdone. <laughs> I like that a lot. So there we go, there is head A on the test bed X Mac looking absolutely fantastic and that gels in perfectly. Once again, I love the fact that you get different body parts with some different kits like the torso on this, some parts of the legs, they would have come from other option sets and armament vehicles. Damn, this looks good, on to the next head. Okay, so starting back, stripped back to the central aspect, let's try the B parts. So first off, there is chin B, which is a very angular chin with some side armored parts. And there is the upper part B, which has three little sensors in it, which almost gives it a little bit of a stealth vibe to me. Like something that would be a bit of a kind of camouflaged or lurker kind of bot. I've no idea why it gives me that impression, but anyway, onto the test bed. Also, you can see the clear part through it, which is very nice. 
So there it is attached and it gives a completely different vibe. Now I didn't use any of the kind of side elements to this one or anything around back because I thought this already had a nice sleek look to it and it kind of fits with the non-equipped back. That is pretty cool and I love the three sensors. That's a real difference to what you usually see with a Bandai kit. So once again, we're back to the core unit again to try the third option, which is option, well, D apparently. No, I got them wrong so far. This is option D. There was no option A. A is blank. So there is option D's lower segment, which is a very angular jaw kind of part. This juts out a lot further than anything we would have seen so far. And there is the upper part, which also juts out quite a bit and has a couple of recessed bits in the top. This looks very, very cool. A little bird-like and almost something like what you'd pop on a faster or transforming style mecha. At least that's the vibe I get off of it. Once again, you can see the clear part inside of it, which is very, very nice. So finally then, I did pop on one of the side parts, which is this right here, which is a singular antenna. There is no matching one for on the other side, so this is just a one-off. Anyway, let's get it on the test bed. So anyway, there it is attached, and this does actually give you an idea of just how large the front segments have made this head. Now, because I do have a kind of striker pack style booster thing going on the back here, this does suit quite a bit because it does look like some kind of aerial use mecha, which is what it's intended to be. So yeah, there we go. That one's pretty cool. And like I mentioned, there is an antenna there on the side, which thankfully is not getting in the way of anything in this particular build. So back to the central aspect, and it's time to try out option E. So first off, we've got this lower segment, which is almost like your typical kind of mecha mouth muzzle. It's just kind of extended out a little bit from the face. So that looks pretty cool. The upper section for this actually has a kind of visor or a sticker across the eyes. Once again, kind of giving it a little bit of a standard mecha kind of look, like some kind of funny peaked discount Gundam. I absolutely adore it. We need something else for on here. Well, this has definitely changed it, so I thought these little antennae would point back the way. They actually point completely out. Also, that gap in between the eyes and the muzzle where you can see into the clear part is actually intentional. I can't do anything about that. That doesn't close up. It just stays like that right there. So anyway, there it is up on the test bed, and what can I say? This has changed the vibe entirely. I feel like I'm looking at some kind of weird 80s mecha anime that never really took off. That is, in a way, I thought it would be bad, but I really like that. Not as much as the first one, but that is a definitely, that's a, that's a look. That's a look right there. So once again, we're set back to the core unit. There it is right there. The next chin section we have in here is super long and pointy and almost looks a bit like a nose as opposed to some kind of beak. This one then actually pairs up with this almost pair of eyes. This is definitely unique. It's getting weirder and weirder and weirder the more we go through them. This is crazy. This I like as well. I've got no option here that I think I'm going... Oh, wait, I do. Around back, we do have a hole. And we've got this little piece that will slot in there just like so, which has added a little bit of a blade segment to the back. Now, we do have optional parts that would have came with the other head set, which of course will fit in here too, if you wanted to try those out together. So anyway, there is that head up on the test bed, and what can I say? This is the most ridiculous thing so far. It looks like some kind of mecha bird, and I'm not sure if it's even in a good way. I mean, it kind of looks a little bit shocked or something. Again, unique. If you want a ridiculously different looking mecha, this might be what you're after. So back to the core head again, there it is. And things have just gotten a whole lot crazier. This is option G's lower section. So this does cover up all the holes so you cannot use an upper part with this. And yeah, that is ridiculous. We got some barbarian energy going on there. If that wasn't cool enough, this is actually for using with the skull segment right here. And that attaches onto the top of this, like a kind of, once again, open barbarian helmet. Look. Add that right there. This looks like something you'd see with a Warhammer 40,000 set, not a Bandai Mecha. I love that. So this does close up all the parts around back as well, which means I can't actually use the last little piece in here that I meant to actually get around to using. So I think I'll be putting back together the original head and I'll use it with that. And finally, there it is anyway, up on the test bed. And this is ridiculous. This needs some kind of big axe or something like that. We've got a Berserker Mecha going on here. This is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. So it looks like an open helmet. It's really cool and it's anything but typical mecha. I like this a lot. So finally, this can be used with a Spinatio and I'm just gonna use it the standard way with this one first before using the mask style. So just pulling off the head, 
And if you wanted to know what this berserker head looks like on a spinatio, there it is. Right there, and that looks pretty damn badass. But let's find out how to use the skull itself by popping it off. Taking a spinatio, then popping off the mask segment. The skull should just slip on over the face just like so. And this is actually a little more awkward than I'd hoped. It kind of clashes with the armor like this. And it kind of does have a little bit of an almost monkey-like energy. Anyway, it looked better on the helmet. So I tried a whole bunch of different combination of these just to see how they would turn out. And for the most part, besides the barbarian horn segments, everything is pretty much combinable with each other. So that does mean all the lower parts, for the most part, work with all the upper parts. But in the end, I went back to this right here. This just ticked all the boxes for me and I think looks best on this test bed little kind of thing I've got running right here. So this is what's going to be staying on it for now. And hopefully I can find some maybe some new shoulders and maybe some arms to jazz this up a little bit. I guess in a way, I'm kind of hoping that we will get a grey Spinatio. So anyway, that right there is it for the review of the Revernova and the new option headset. And I have to say, I still absolutely adore 30 minute missions and everything they release just adds on and adds on and adds on. Now we've got four armed mecha as well as some nice front skirting armor. Coming up next, I can't remember the name of the next release, but this actually gives us some back skirting armor, or should I say a butt flap, that allows more arms to be attached on. So it seems like we're going to be able to have ourselves a six armed mecha coming up very, very soon. The new heads look great, they really break the mold when it comes to mecha model heads, so this, I don't know, it opens up a whole new chapter when it comes to mech design right out of a box. And I guess at its core, that's what makes this line so awesome. If you grab a whole bunch of kits that are the same color, like the green and olive drab we took a look at today, you can kit bash all the parts out of box without paint, without anything. Grab some option sets too, and uh, well, you've got your own unique mecha model. And I only ever scratch the surface here. Some people make some obscene customs out of these. And well, if you fancy your chance at trying, I'll leave a link down there in the description to grab these from Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Mecha Model Kit reviews, and I'll see you next time.